Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers welcome to my review on Doctor Who the Underwater Menace. Now I'm going to be talking about the animation and the two surviving episodes and of course really what I generally think about it because this animation came out back in November and we're now on the first day of May so I kind of wanted to wait so people can actually go and buy it and then I don't have to spoil it for people. And I kind of wanted to wait so I didn't spoil it for anybody. So here is my review on Doctor Who the Underwater Menace. And generally, my opinions have changed on it since I last did a review on this story. So when I first started this channel back in 2017, I waited until 2018. And I did my review on the Underwater Menace on the very, very terrible, terrible reconstruction episode that we had back in 2015. I did my review on this DVD and... This DVD is pff, crap, just absolutely pure rubbish and not great. So that can go away because now we have got a new version of the story released on animation. So as you can see, I've got the DVD version here. And of course, I've got the Blu-ray version. I've got the, the nice Blu-ray steelbook in this fantastic steelbook protector. So And of course, I've got the DVD. So basically, I do have it twice on DVD. I've got the original version for 2015 and the new one. So what can I say about the Underwater Menace? Well... I actually have to say, I actually pretty much enjoyed watching this story. Now, I did enjoy the two surviving episodes, so episodes two and three on the original DVD. I just never really liked the, the Telestat reconstruction. So I always put it down by because of the Telestat reconstructions because they don't really match to what's going on in the story. They don't look as entertaining. But the animations have really worked on that. So I'm going to talk about the black and white version first and then, of course, talk about the coloured version and which one I prefer at the two. So... What can I say about the fantastic animation for this missing story from 1967? So really the amount of times I have rewatched a story since November is absolutely a miracle because I never used to highly regard the Underwater Menace as a great story, but now with the animation, I do really consider it to be one of the best Troughton stories I have seen. Not my favourite Troughton story, but one of the best Troughton stories because Troughton is, of course, my third favourite incarnation of the Doctor. So, what can I say about this episode? Well, I have got my review written on my laptop, so I am looking at my laptop as I'm trying to read out my review. So, I'm going to go by the black and white animation first and basically talk about how I watched this episode. So, when I was watching the black and white, it really bugs me how anim they've got anim animated episodes 1 and 4, but they've also animated episodes 2 and 3. But episodes 2 and 3 do, do exist. So luckily for the special features on the DVD and the Blu-ray, you can either watch the animation or if you go to special features, you can watch the animation adaption for episode one. Then you can go straight to the surviving episode two and then underneath it, you can go to the episode five and three and back to the animation. So and I'll just talk about the kind of swap I did. So really I went from animation to surviving, then to surviving and then to the animation. So the animation for episode one looks absolutely brilliant. I love the landscape of when the tires lands at the bottom of the cliffs of Atlantis. And of course, I actually do quite enjoy this story more than I actually thought I did. I kind of want to get, get it now on Target Box so I can actually enjoy the story a lot more. The animation just looks absolutely brilliant for when the tires materialises on the actual cliff. And of course, it just looks absolutely brilliant. I love the whole banter between the Doctor, Jamie and Polly and Ben, really, because when they, they literally, it's Jamie's very first trip in the TARDIS, so it's actually quite good. So when they arrive on Atlantis, I really like the way how they're all hoping for different things, where Ben goes, I hope it's not the Daleks. And of course, I like basic when Polly goes like, please say 1966, please say 1966. And the Doctor goes, somewhere with more adventures, some more monsters. And of course, I land on the fantastic planet well on earth they land in a time period before atlantis sunk into the ocean so when they get into the actual proper caves they go into a investigate and really they find that the aztecs the the aztec the aztecians people not the aztecs the aztecians i think they're called the aztecians i can't remember this is around about the same point in time where basically the Doctor landed in Mexico in the Aztecs for William Hartnell's Doctor. So I do kind of think this is basically around the time the same period of that story because there is stuff from the Aztecs basically in this episode. So I do think they reuse props from the Aztecs and basically brought it into the actual episode, which I think actually does it more detailed because I do like to think of this more like a 
I figured it more like a prequel to basically the Aztecs because that is 15th century Mexico where Atlantis is basically at that point in time as well. So the evil scientist, Saroff, I don't like him. I really don't like him. There's something about his acting. I just do not enjoy it in part two and three. But his appearance is still quite good in the story. He is a good villain. And that's the thing. When you've got somebody playing a human villain, and of course, it's basically not done overreacting. Now... When I say that, when you get to like some people being very, very overreacting, oh, I'm the villain, I'm going to re-overact this scene. The actor, the actor that is playing Savron is nothing like that. But I do like Savron's plan because it does seem a bit interesting that the fact, basically, he's trying to raise Atlantis a bit higher and basically trying to destroy the main course of Earth. But it does basically result with Atlantis sinking at the bottom of the ocean instead of it being risen to the top. And of course, I love the fact how basically the Doctor is there trying to talk about how he, how not in good this plan is, how ingenious, how ingeniously stupid it is. And of course, you got yourself going bang, bang, bang. Nothing in the world can stop me now. Yeah, I just don't physically like Saroff, but the animation for episodes one and four do seem absolutely brilliant. Now. Some people do find it charming to go from animation to live action to live action to back into animation. But I have no issue with that. So the black and white version, it is good. I do have to give this one a 9 out of 10 because the story is actually quite good and more brilliantly. I mean, I never... The fact that I only watched like episodes 2 and 3 of the surviving episodes and I never really watched episode 1 and 4 because the Tessat reconstruction are just absolutely terrible from 2015... So it's actually quite nice to revisit the story in black and white in its highly glory days, which is actually quite good. And the animation does help the story to basically look booming. And then, of course, I did watch the whole four parts all in animation as well. So episodes one to four is basically I watched the coloured version, not the black and white version, because I prefer to watch if I'm going to watch an animation in black and white, I'd rather watch it with the two surviving episodes or the three surviving episodes and then go straight and watch the animations with it instead of me watching all of the animation if there's like surviving episodes so i kind of went from animation in black and white to basic live action live action and back into animation but for the full for the all four parts to be actually colorized absolutely brilliant now the times when it means colorized is basically at the bottom of atlantis looks more brilliant in color than it does in black and white but I love how the fact in color would go into like sort of widescreen where in the black and white they keep it to basically the old the old days back in the 60s where screens were a lot smaller. So I do like the, how they keep that in color. But then if you watch it in black in color for the new fans, they get to watch it in full on widescreen. And of course, it does seem a lot brilliant in widescreen. I have to be honest with you, again, the whole even though the color version is basically just the same plot as the black and white version. I do prefer the colour version because even though I get to watch these two surviving episodes in black and white, I actually do prefer both. I mean, for the black and white one, I have to give it basically a 9 out of 10. But for the colour, I have to also give it a 9 out of 10 because sometimes the coloured versions look so much better than the black and white versions. Or sometimes the black and white versions look so much better than the coloured versions. And for me to say that, the black and white versions that look absolutely perfect goes to... The macro tail, because the macro tail, it works in colour and it works in black and white. And that's the thing, it does work in black and white as it does in colour. Same with the, the faceless ones, but I do prefer to watch the surviving episodes 1 and 3 with the animations. So I do like to watch the surviving episodes with the animations, but I do watch the animations in full, but in colour. So yeah, I do have to say, I do absolutely enjoy this story. More than I actually did before. I mean, I couldn't get into the Teddy Snap Reconstruction, but I did like, enjoy episodes 1 and 2. And... The animation does help with the story. It really brings it into full, full, full version. I mean, I absolutely love the animation. I always prefer the animations over the taste that reconstructions. And of course, for me to sit here and say what stories I've watched in reconstruction is, of course, the real space. I've watched the Power of the Daleks when my friend lent me that on when I was back at secondary school. And of course, the evil of the Daleks. I never really got into taste that reconstructions. And I never really got into the the, the invasion taste that reconstructions. I never got into the invasion ones. Ugh. That is on the VHS. But I absolutely do love this animation. I always love the animation adaptions to missing episodes. And to actually have this episode, basically this whole four-part story, 
to be missing, but only episodes two and three do exist. So it's quite nice to have an animated of episodes one and four to bring that story into full. So which is why I did watch it basically from animation, color, uh, animation, live action, live action, back into animation. And it is actually quite nice to watch it all in color as well, just for the animation bits. So yeah, this is a fantastic DVD release. I'm really looking forward to seeing the next release, which is of course, the Celestial Toy Maker, and I've got that pre-order, so I'm quite looking forward to watching that story. And I probably will watch the it in black and white first, so I can watch the episodes one to three in black and white in animation, and then go straight to episode four of the live action, and then basically watch it all in black and white, and then watch it all in colour in for the actual full animation. So I probably will do it that way. So I'm quite looking forward to actually sitting down watching the Celestial Toy Maker, but I actually enjoyed the Underwater Maze a lot better and a lot more than I actually did back back all those years before, back since 2015 when the original DVD came out and it was just absolutely terrible. The animation really does help with this story and it's absolutely perfect. Honestly, it's perfect. It's, I mean, there is only one animation story I don't really enjoy because I don't like the way how they go over the top with it and that's basically to Fury from the Deep because they do go over the top with Fury from the Deep making the sets a lot bigger and of course there's something quite offish with Troughton's face expressions that I just really don't click with that animation but the story itself is absolutely perfect so I still watch the I do watch Fury from the Deep now and again I just gotta be in a certain mood to watch the story because it is a good story I mean I do want to get it on target book so I can actually own it and then re give it a good fantastic read all the way through but I absolutely do love the fantastic animation, but it just has a few issues with the view from the deep. So it is definitely one of the weak animations, adaptions for the missing episodes because of the whole big sets. And there's something a bit offish with facial inspections for Troughton. It doesn't look quite like Troughton in some bits. But yeah, the underwater mist, I do not have that issue with it. It's brilliant. So for me to say how I rank, rank these is basically 9 out of 10 for the black and white version with the two surviving episodes, then for the full-on animation, still, I don't know, because I haven't really watched the f all four parts in black and white animation, I've only watched the it with the two surviving episodes, but for the full colour as well, that is actually a 9 out of 10 as well, because it is a great story, not my favourite, probably animation adaption for Troughton, because that still has to go hands down to the Macro Terror, because the Macro Terror, I consider it to be a masterpiece of an animation adaption for Mr. Doctor Who's story. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of the Underwater Menace? What is your favourite? Do you prefer the full, all four episodes in black and white in animation? Do you watch it with episodes one animated and then the two surviving episodes and then episode three animated? Or do you watch it all in colour animation? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe and share. And Jerry from Awesome, Doctor Who content. And I hope you all enjoy this channel for a long, longer because I'm never going to stop making these incredible videos for you all. So have a cracking day, you amazing viewers and subscribers.